I have been dabbling a little bit with WebRDC. Oh, exactly. I mean, we can stop the topic right there. We pretty much already spoiled the conclusion. Not even that. No, that's, that's all I know about WebRTC. That is the first thing that hear. already annoys me. So WebRTC has been around for a good amount of time. I want to say at least four years, because I know that Sam Dutton's article on HTML5 rocks is from 2013. Yes. So it's, it's been around for a while. It, yes. it allows you to basically create a connection to another browser that can be even on a different machine, even on a different network, so theoretically. Video calling. Um... No. Exactly. <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So uh, I'm going to explain first, and then give you the mnemonic. So, okay, okay. so by default, WebRTC connections are established by you figuring out your own IP addresses. So you figure out I am okay. available over localhost. Then you get your local IP network IPs. And that's pretty much it. That's what you send over to the other client, and they try to connect. What you send to the other client, I'm available on localhost. Yeah, if you're on the same machine, that works. I, OK, I see. Right? Like yes. you, all the possible addresses that you know you could be available under, you somehow yes. pass to the other client, and then they try to connect. Oh, so you find them all, and they, it just you tries can. them. Yeah. You okay. get, you get okay. in a, a series of events for ICE candidates, and ICE is this protocol on how to establish Oh connection. my god, this is full of yes, exactly. an, let's ICE, not, let's an not... ICE candidate. But that only works if these uh, peers are on the same machine, so localhost works, or on yeah. the same network without client separation, which most public hotspots have. Right. So if you're at home and you have your phone and your laptop, this will most likely already work without a ton stun or a turn server. OK, because they both know their IP address on the same network. They can talk to each other. And then you establish yeah. the connection with all Nothing the, leaves the house. Yeah, with the WebRTC right. shenanigans, which is another completely different and super awful topic. Mm -hmm. But if you're not on the same network, right. for example, you're roaming, or not if you're roaming, you're out with your phone, which has a proper public IP. Yes. Um, so no firewalling, but just a public IP. Mm -hmm. The phone doesn't know it's public IP necessarily. So that's when it stun server comes into play. The sole right. purpose of a stun server is to receive a request, figure out which IP this request came from, and give back a signal in a WebRTC compatible way that says, this is your public IP. So you can right. add that to your ICE candidates, because that's another IP that you're potentially reachable under. If, however, you're behind your router at home, or you have a firewall where you know incoming connections are blocked, or you actually have to like do some natting to get back to your actual some, connection. Some natting. We'll that is where that. the turn server comes into play, which is a server in the interwebs that both sides connect to and tunnel that traffic through it. Right. And the so way yeah. to remember it for me is like turn has the R, which stands for relay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult second album, mate. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <laughs> it's how yeah. I remember it, yeah. honestly. Like, no, you're, um, yeah, you're, 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 your Flexbox ones were a bit better. It, it was better. Yes. but like. That's the mnemonic I have, because the, that is the relay server. That relays your traffic f instead of you to the public interweb, right. so both can connect, okay. even if both ends are behind different firewalls in different networks. In my experiments, I haven't even bothered with setting up stun or turn, because okay. I was like, I'm just going to, because what I was doing, I was once again playing around with Comlink, mm -hmm. and I wanted to expose the entirety of one browser to another browser. So basically, I ha oh. I've exposed the entire window object of Safari to Chrome, and I can change the title of the Safari window from Chrome by calling document.title equals blah, blah, blah. And it but it is actually a remote object from the other browser with a WebRTC tunnel in between, which is super cool. Yeah, But that is getting really cool. there was a super painful experience, because you can totally tell that WebRTC was written by people who are in telecommunications and yes. not in web development. I do find that the, the, the web standards, even the, the standards text and the APIs, it does look like it's it was imported from another planet, right? Like a, a completely different way of thinking. It starts out with B, that it's, also, it's already completely asymmetric to start with. So you start with creating an offer okay. that contains what you are. And once you say, this RDC connection, the local end, should fit this offer, whatever that means, you get ICE candidates, which describe yourself. Sure. <laughs> Help. <laughs> I need somebody. <laughs> okay. That's what I, I, it's, it's super confusing. So you, you create an RTC, connect, RTC peer connection, even though you okay. don't have a connection yet. But you start, that's the first thing you do. Right. You create a connection you don't have. 
then you create to a nice the candidate. data channels you want to create because it needs to know what kind of connection you want to have in the end. So even though the connection hasn't been established, you're already thinking about channels and creating the objects. Right. Okay. Then you create this offer, which describes, I guess, what your capabilities are. Like I can do these codecs, I can accept data channels, I am the uh, passive listener waiting for connections. These kind of things are in there. Something that can be like a lowest common denominator. I guess. Create. And then you okay. say to the connection set local description, where you say, I am on the local end, and we're going to do the other bit in a bit. So you set your local connection, and you get a list of your candidates. So now you have the offer and your candidates, and now it is your responsibility as a developer to get these two things, the list of candidates and the offer, to the other side or to the other peer that wants to connect to you. Right. So peer discovery is not even covered by WebRDC. You already need to know and have a way to communicate with the other end to set up a WebRDC connection. Oh, so that's separate from a, a stunner return server, that, that part that can actually sort of broker the deal yeah. between two. You already need to know where hmm. to talk to to set up the connection. So that's why always you have a signaling back end where you basically you say, here's my offer, here's my ICE candidates. And then the other end, the other computer basically, gets those and sets what it, the offer as its remote description. Because from their perspective, that is the other end of the connection. Right. Oh, so you're talking to the... Like the, the second the, computer wants to... You want, so you have one right, computer, right. and the second computer, they want to have a web RDC connection. Yes. Then somehow out of band, you transfer the offer and the ICE candidates to the other computer, and that okay. one uses as its remote description, because that is describing the other end of the connection. But then this side has to also generate an answer and another list of peer candidates, and it has to go back out of band. Then this side says, the, other, the original side says, this is my remote connection, and then you can communicate. And it is, it sounds confusing because it is confusing. Do you know what? Index DB sounds great now. I know, right? That's, that's, it's fine. It is it's perfect. It is mind blowing. And that is explains to me A, why nobody is really using it because it is yeah. really difficult, and B, why the first thing people did is write abstraction libraries on top of it. But being able, but like the end result that you got to with the data channel of being able to sort of have like one browser talking to another as if it is just in a worker, that's pretty incredible. I, I see potential in, in combining WebRTC and Comlink, but there's work to be done. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, they also played um, uh, Say La Vie by uh, Bewitched and just ask for one extra bonus point who knows what this song is. I know what that song is. So do you know what that song is? Homework for you. It's the best song ever. It's <laughs> an Irish girl band. It's amazing.